Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today I will take you for a walk. We are back in this beautiful forest. It's been a while since I took you for such a walk. And I want to remind you today to stop sabotaging your progress. I know many of us may find ourselves being hard on ourselves because we haven't reached what we were seeking for. We haven't changed as much as we wanted or we haven't experience what we're looking for, what we're intending to. And I know this uh, kind of an attitude is quite destructive because it's driven by the emotions from the past. And emotions are nothing else but experiences from the past that are still carried on in this present moment. And from this emotional state, we're kind of navigating ourselves into the future, which will be nothing else but the a repetition of the past. So my reminder for you is to stop sabotaging your progress because you are a creator, not a reactor. And I know this sounds familiar, but um, in practical terms, it means that we need to have daily moments in our lives, daily devotions, where we decide to detach from these old experiences and exchange these old emotions for something more fulfilling, for something that is closer to wholeness. And there's an old wise saying, an ancient saying that says, wholeness lives within you. And we need to have certain devotions that helps us to plug into that wholeness, to find that wholeness. And it's not an intellectual process. It's not, it's not something to think about. It's something to, to tap in. It's something to generate, to plug yourself to. And in order to do something with that, means that you have to disconnect from everything that's pulling you away from it. Like you have so many streams of uh, attention all around you. If you just go on social media, you will, like algorithms, you will find so many videos you've been watching and so many recommendations for new videos. And more you're wa watching content, uh, more you will start to see recommendations for interesting new content. And that's how our attention works. When we place our attention onto something, we'll soon find something interesting there. And when we focus on something interesting there, we'll find something new interesting somewhere else. So we are constantly focusing on something and therefore our energy is constantly shattering. It's getting weaker and weaker and that's how we lose our power. That's how we lose our strength. So if we want to get our power back, and I think right now is more important than ever, because if we recognize that, let's say social media can be or can or is creating a line of time for you, then you're not designing your own timeline. Then you're walking on a design of social media line of time, time where everything is speeding up. There's more and more content, more and more opinions of others, more and more different ideas, more and more of everything. And therefore there's less and less and less awareness of who we are within. That's why you're sabotaging yourself because you're comparing yourself with someone else somewhere else. So basically your attention is not in your wholeness, it's somewhere else. And if your attention is not on wholeness, you can't experience love, you can't experience self-love, you can't find nothing to be grateful for because you're not focused on things to be grateful for. And love is an ex internal experience that uh, can only be nurtured within. And that's when we become more loving, right? <laughs> so to me, the greatest reminder is to get to places like this, um, to notice, well, this is life. That's where everything is alive. And here, time slows down. Time really slows down here. I've been traveling uh, for the last few days and I needed this 
to, to slow myself down and to ground myself once again and to, to detach from all the happening outside of me. So I think we all need this kind of reminders and we all need this kind of uh, breaking uh, or break points. <laughs> when we take a break and we just acknowledge life, we acknowledge life and we recognize right now nothing else matters than being alive, being alive in this moment and recognizing what can I do with the life that I have. So before we go on, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because it helps to bring this message to more people and also check out our Instagram page, Attract Passion, where I'm sharing daily messages, uh, daily uplifting short quick quotes to elevate your spirit a little bit and check out my other Instagram page, I Draw My Passion, where you can find my art gallery. So yeah, we need to figure out what we want to create with our life. So if we stay attached to these emotions from the past, we forget that we are creative creatures. We kind of identify ourselves by how we feel and that's what uh, starts navigating our thoughts. And then we start to think why we feel the way we feel and we identify with the reasons why we should keep feeling that same way. And it becomes our identity and truly our identity becomes like an affirmation for a reality we are experiencing. Like this is why my life is the way it is and that's my reality. But when we take all this energy back and let's say we place it into our internal world, we recognize how heavy it is sometimes, right? There are so many thoughts and that's when we become familiar with all these automatic programs that are running in our minds and it's so hard sometimes to detach from them or to quiet them down, but you can't quiet them down if you're not familiar with them. So you become familiar with that inner critic, right? That inner voice that's like... Uh, a hurt inner child that's constantly trying to keep you safe, that's constantly trying to keep you somewhere in the familiar zone, only so you would not get hurt again. But that part of you will never encourage you to do something new, to do something big, something creative, something inspiring. That part of you will only keep you safe. And many people are actually defined by that part of them by that inner voice inner critic inner you know hurt little kid that lives within all of us we all have this voice you know sometimes when i'm filming videos i have this voice like who are you to talk about this like what are you talking about you know it is within all of us but it's then through meditation, we learn to become familiar with it, to become more gentle towards it and to recognize it's not our truth. This voice is not our truth. It's not who we are. It's a certain program. And slowly, by practicing a certain form of uh, whatever helps you to tap into your inner quietness, you become more familiar with that quietness, which is the source of truth, the source of wisdom, the source of intelligence. That's how people start channeling, because they, they train themselves to be in quietness, and in quietness, something sometimes speaks to you, right? It may be like in ancient Native American cultures, they call it higher self, or it may be like in some teachings, they would call it uh, spirit guides or it may be God, the source or however you want to explain. But as long as this voice of wisdom is guiding you towards greater uh, truth, towards greater wholeness and righteousness and, and something more valuable that uh, life truly is all about, you will be good. You will be good. And that's how you will 
start trusting yourself more and seeing the progress you're making. So it's really not something we think of ourselves into being. It's more about uh, training ourselves to become more familiar with this quiet part of us. And I use meditation for that and sometimes, you know, it takes me one hour to, to quiet my mind down, to experience this calmness within me. Sometimes it takes me one hour and I will sit there for one hour just to just be and, to, you know, to listen to my mind and everything that it has to say. And I just became so familiar with it that I can easily notice, okay, this is because I was on social media. This is because I've heard something there. These voices are coming from that person. These voices are coming from my past. And, you know, slowly you start putting all these different voices into boxes. It's like organizing your mind. That's why I always say to you to learn to organize your mind. Learn to create a certain order in your mind so you can start to feel more at peace within your own beingness. Mind has such an incredible power over you. And, you know, the best... You know, the, the, or you can understand this statement every time when you feel overwhelmed because you've maybe spent too much time on social media watching too many things or you've heard too many critics or you've been exposed to something um, painful. You see how much power your mind has over you. But if you learn to really use your mind like a tool. That's what, again, many Tibetan monks uh, were teaching us if we study the ancient books. We start using our mind as a tool of God, a tool of the Creator. And you start noticing, well, all my thoughts have a source. They're coming from somewhere. They're like clouds flying around us. And it's the frequency of the thought. It's like a quality of the thought. You know, for example, if you're stressed, you will start to think stressed thoughts. Thoughts that will generate more stress within you. Those are low quality thoughts. But when you're grateful or loving, you will plug yourself to higher thoughts that are more meaningful, more constructive, and more beautiful. And we can only do that if we train ourselves to disconnect from external world and to become <laughs> like a gardeners of the mind. Gardeners of the mind. Right like that ancient quote says, don't chase butterflies, but rather take care of your inner garden and butterflies will come. That's so true because you recognize if I really start a day in quietness, in presence, in contentment, and rather than reawakening these emotions from the past, I will exchange them for emotions of my future, for emotions of joy and love and happiness and bliss and creativity. I will call up that version of myself. I know it exists. If I can see it, if I can visualize it, it exists. So when I call up that version of myself, I will feel it. And if I can elevate my emotions, I will also think greater thoughts. I will start to believe into a possibility. And I will start to believe that if I set something to do, it will find me. And options will find me. Doors will open up. And all I need to do then is to boldly step through them. So most people don't see opportunities because as soon as they wake up, they start re-experiencing their past. And many of us are doing that. That's why I always say to you, stay devoted to a practice that helps you to reawaken your future, to reawaken 
the energy of your future, the emotions of your future, to be defined by a vision, to be defined by an idea that is greater than you right now. And then cultivate that inner garden. <laughs> cultivate that inner garden that is poisoned by too much of, of uh, poison, that is poisoned <laughs> by too much of bad information. I mean, if information is not inspire you to be better, to be more mindful, to be more conscious, then most probably it's destructive. And destructive thoughts will create destructive life and destructive life will destroy you. And that's poison, isn't it? So you need to find a cure for that and cure is clarity. Cure for any poison that is mental based is clarity. And clarity again is experienced in quietness in a bit slower pace so we can see things more clearly like you when you're surrounded by trees and you ask yourself how would it feel like to be a tree right now you will recognize it's a really slow frequency really slow frequency sure i don't want you to be like a tree and stand at one place but it reminds you of um of the the sensation of peace you experience when you slow yourself down. And it's often necessary if we want to see things more clearly. And sometimes if we slow ourselves down for one hour in a day or two hours in a day to meditate or to, to just reflect on our lives, it may help us to speed up the process of change. So sometimes slowing down can actually speed up the progress. <laughs> and that's uh, an interesting thing to say, but uh, it's a true thing when it comes to real life. <laughs> so don't be afraid to slow yourself down because it may just speed up the process of change you're working on. But learn to appreciate where you are right now, my friend. Learn to, to honor your journey. Learn to... To see yourself as someone who is trying. And every time you try, you've done a progress. Every time you try, you've done a progress. You've done something that is good for you. And that's enough. You don't need to you know, to experience a massive breakthrough, to say, oh, now I am enough. Sometimes you just need to, to make one more step or to spend one more minute in a meditation to experience a sense of a breakthrough, and that's enough. And sometimes you need to say one more no, maybe, to a person that's uh, abusing you or to a habit that's not uh, good for you anymore. Just to experience a breakthrough. And <laughs> you know, it's not so hard when we, we become more humble with ourselves. When we recognize that even if you're building a business, that uh, you're not successful when you make your first million or when you make your first deal. Success is actually starting every time you decide to start. That's success. And those who are starting every time they decide to start and they keep going when they say they will keep going, they eventually meet bigger successes, right? So that's how easy it is. That's the power of momentum, but also the power of self-determination and staying true to yourself, being honest with yourself and 
noticing the pattern. Well, if I say I will do something and then I start uh, procrastinating, we can find so many words that may explain this pattern. Oh, it's this, it's this trauma or this whatever. And all these statements are true, but they will not change anything if we don't stop that pattern and just exchange it for the one that works. And the one that works is to be true to yourself. When you say right now, I will meditate for 40 minutes, you sit down and you meditate for 40 minutes. You set a timer and you see how it goes. And you will go through maybe emotional turmoil and <laughs> mental chattering. And you just sit there with yourself and you will notice that there's so much of noises. But if you don't become aware of them, they are unconsciously dictating your life. That's why it's so important to be aware of what's happening in between, like between your quietness and your uh, consciousness. What's happening in between in that analytical mind that's constantly analyzing everything, because that's what separates you from that uh, wholeness, quietness. And more we become familiar with quietness, more we become whole, because quietness is quite infinite. And we recognize in quietness, we are not defined by the body, by the space and time. So we become that quietness, we become that infinity. And if you stay there for a bit longer, you recognize, what if I am that quietness? What if truly thoughts are defining me and I can choose greater thoughts? What if emotions are the byproducts of my thoughts? And I'm defined by that because I'm not conscious of choosing greater thoughts. And what if my life really became a byproduct of the momentum I was walking on and not being even aware that I am the one that is making choices in my life? That's why I came here today to remind you to stop sabotaging your progress. To anyone who needed to hear this today, I hope you found great value in today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button. <laughs> and have a wonderful creative day, my friend. To anyone who would love to check out my art, check out our Etsy store, I draw my passion. This year we are making many updates. Uh, we are building up our own store, so stay tuned for that. Many updates are coming. And I want to say thanks to all of you for being here, for having this uh, pleasant walk in this uh, mystical forest. It is a mystical place. It's a really good energy here. I needed that for myself. I just came out of gym and nature always feels good, you know, to plug yourself to this calmness, to get away from all the happening, right? So give yourself a moment of nature as well and have a beautiful day. Stay beautiful, my friends. I'm sending you all much love, blessings and power. Till next time, one love.